His love is so deep. We only have a taste of it right now and it's already too much to handle. I can't even keep a straight face when going to work and stuff. Just, it just, it just melts you. When I was young, <clears throat> I searched for that kind of love in all the wrong places. Didn't know, didn't know even what I was searching for. And couldn't understand when it felt like I was being pushed away. And then as I grew older, I started holding myself back from those I care about. I used all the excuses, oh, I'm protecting them. I don't want to blow up and cause them problems or whatever. But the truth was I didn't trust anymore. I didn't love. I didn't have faith. I lost that faith of love. That's the one thing that makes everything else pointless in the enemy's attack. That that groom's passion for his bride. You can't you can't stop it. You can't hinder it. It will be. It just is. And he's so loving that when we We'd push him away, we hurt him. And he'd pull back long enough to mend. And then he'd come right back constantly, over and over. And when I came to the place where I had that clear choice to make, was I going to completely walk away from him? I didn't even realize that's what I was so wrapped up in my own selfish things that I didn't even realize what choice I was about to make until he showed me. And immediately it broke me up to a point, but I couldn't go all the way. And he didn't cast me aside. He was so tender and said, okay, but it's not pleasing. I want all, but I'll honor your request. The passion he has for us, there is nothing like it. In Psalms 130, Lord, verse 1, Lord, I cry out to you out of the depths of my despair. Hear my voice, O God. Answer this prayer and my hear my plea of mercy, for mercy. Lord, if you measured us and marked us with our sins, who would ever have their prayers answered? But your forgiving love is what makes you so wonderful. No wonder you are loved and worshipped. This is why I wait upon you, expecting your breakthrough. For your word begins, brings me hope. I long for you more than a watchman would long for morning light. I will watch and wait for you, O God, throughout the night. O Israel, keep hoping, keep trusting, keep waiting on the Lord for his tenderhearted, kind, and forgiving. So many times... My desperate plea would be asked, but I wasn't patient enough or trusting enough to wait. He didn't lay it to my charge. He knew. He knew something I didn't. He knew when he opened my eyes and I could see clearly, there's no way I would hold anything back from him. When the pain was no longer so great that it blinded me, There's no one or nothing or nothing on this earth or nothing in my heart that I would withhold. No part, no crevice, no no deep wound. And that I wouldn't seek him for stuff. Or, oh, get me out of this despair or protect me from this attack or, or whatever it may be. But I would long to lavish my love back upon him and to heal his wounds. All those that I gave him by saying, stay back, get back, don't come any closer. You can't have that, even though he already purchased it. I even held on to the shame which he despised. 
I was so cruel to him, not realizing that me holding on to all that wasn't anything against anyone, even myself, when I was holding bitterness against myself, it was against him. He never forsook me. The rest of that verse says, He has a thousand ways to set you free. Verse 8, He himself will redeem you. He will ransom you from the cruel slavery of your sins. If you've been in the bondage, if you've been in the lion's jaws, so to speak, if you've been to that place, you feel forsaken and you cry out and you're desperate, but you hold back, he will answer. But what pleases him, what brings him healing to his spirit and his wounds is that we lay nothing in between us, that it all is his. Chapter 131, verse 1. Lord, my heart is meek before you. I do not consider myself better than others. I'm content to not pursue matters that are over my head, such as your complex mysteries and wonders that I'm not yet, yet ready to understand. I am humbled and quieted in your presence. So many times I found myself in the recent weeks just laying up here, even in the heat. And those that know me know I don't like the heat. But I can't get enough. And I know he's out there with me, but it's different. It is, it's different. In fact, I've fallen asleep here so many times. And I know he's not mad at me for falling asleep when I'm praising and worshiping him because I'm resting in him. I, I'm anxious when I'm not here. And I know there's others that feel the same way. I, I come by and see some here or I find out they've been here for hours and hours and hours because they know where their groom chooses to meet all of his body. Like a content, contented child who rests on his mother's lap, I'm your resting child and my soul is content in you. O oh, people of God, your time has come to quietly trust, waiting upon the Lord now and forever. Psalms 132, verse 1. Lord, please do not forget all the hardships David had to pass through and how he promised you Jacob's mighty God saying, I will not cross the threshold of my own home to sleep in my own bed. I will not sleep or slumber, not even take time to close my eyes and rest until I find a place for you to dwell. He's not interested in, a t in some earthly building. He wants to dwell right here. He wants to dwell right here in the heart of every single one of his bride, every member no matter what member, even if you think you're the lowliest member in the body, it doesn't matter. He cherishes that member. He formed it so tenderly and with intent. It is not right when one of those members are not there or not functioning or not well or not whole and or pushing him back. But he's tender. And he knows. He knows when he opens your eyes he knows what your heart will do. You may not. I didn't. I wrote myself off years ago. Every time I stumbled, every time I fall, fell short, I would just write myself off. And it just broke him because he knew he didn't write me off. It wasn't right. My selfish desires, my untrustingness was trying to rob him of this vessel, this member of the body. And he was not going to allow it to be snatched out of his hands. And that goes for whatever members aren't even realized yet. He will not have them snatched out of his hands before the time. And it's his passion and his love that goes and finds those members and brings them out of the lion's den. Verse 4. I will not sleep, slumber, nor even... Oh, I read it. Let's see. 
Verse 6, first we heard that the ark was at Bethlehem. Then we found it in the forest of Kirith Jerome. Let's go into the God's dwelling place and bow down and worship before him. Arise, O Lord, and enter your resting place, both you and the ark of your glorious strength. May your priest wear the robes of righteousness and let all your godly lovers sing for joy. He's the lover of our souls. Everything on this earth is a shadow. And marriage is one of the most holy covenants on this earth as a shadow. It's just a mere shadow. It's to be honored and respected such as it is, but it's a shadow. It's not the king in all of his glory with his holy army that comes back and makes the enemy fear. It's the groom coming back for his bride with his robe dipped in her blood, every member of the bride, from the able all the way up to whoever the last one will be. That's why they want the rocks to hide them from the face. He has the right. He's the only one that has the right to come back and to strike out at the enemy. He longs to serve us at table. It's not over. You would think in a carnal mind, trying to understand what's not carnal, that it should be us serving him. He's not going to have it that way. That's why he's moved the body to love each other so flawlessly. You can't outserve the other members because that's him serving us. We're, and, and, and you can't refuse service. I did that for so long and I didn't mean to. It's just, no. And it took him through a few brothers and sisters to say, oh no, you're getting your turn. To where I realized I'd been saying, no, you can't do that, Lord. Kind of like Peter, oh, you're not going to wash my feet. And he was gently saying, if I don't, if you don't let me, you have no part because they are mine. That is me. It's their love. It's not it makes no sense in the earthly. There is no such thing even comparable on the earth. Verse 10, Do not forsake your anointed king now, but honor your servant David. For you gave your word and promised David in an unbreakable oath that one of his sons would be sitting on the throne to succeed him as king. You also promised that if David's sons would be faithful to keep the promise to follow you, obeying the words you spoke to them, that David's dynasty would never end. Lord, you have chosen Zion as your dwelling place, for your pleasure is fulfilled in making it your home. I hear you say, I will make this place my eternal dwelling, for I have loved and desired it as my very own. I will make Zion prosper and satisfy her poor with my provision. I will cover my priest with salvation's power, and all my godly lovers will shout for joy. I will increase the anointing that was upon David, and my glistening glory will rest upon my chosen ones. But David's enemies will be covered with shame. All them I will make holiness bloom. Saints, there is nothing like His presence. There is nothing like His passion. That's how David could freely know and every time, even though his heart and his mind told him one thing, that the enemy's prospering, that you've forsaken me, he would always end it knowing that's not the truth. He knew, his, he knew the lover of his soul. And when the Lord cleared his eyes from his sins, he was broken. He realized he wounded the lover of his souls. He wanted to be right there in his dwelling forever. We will see that one day. We'll see it realized. No longer us in the flesh here on this earth toiling and, and looking for the other members of the bride and working as, as empty vessels for him. That's all it is. How has a cup got any honor in itself? It's just a vessel made for a particular purpose. That's how we can stay humble. That's how we must stay humble because that's what's pleasing to our, our Lord. And he said to his apostles, I go to prepare a place for you. 
and he's eagerly waiting his dad's word, go, go get your bride. And his dad's not going to do it until the bride is made perfect and the dwelling is made perfect. That's our heavenly father. But there is nothing that's righteous and perfect in his father's will that he won't do for his bride. So we must not do like I did in the past and I endeavor not to do ever and again in the future. Never push him away. Not even if it's through someone else. If we realize that's not an earthly, natural love or, or, or word or compassion, don't refuse it. Even if it's from the most unlikely source, don't refuse it because that's the Lord. And we're to have that impartiality where we can't hold any we can't hold anything against anyone how could we and i just praise him for what the lord is doing and the way he's moving and i just i'm undone by his presence and his power and his love that thing i long so long for he's granted me to be part of it from the from when he starts it here in this congregation I don't understand why he chooses who he chooses, but as Dad said so many times, he always chooses the right people. And it's going to be done regardless. If we get in the way, he's going to do it. He's going to move us. So let us not be in the way of it. Praise the Lord.